Come on, Don, just at least try out. Come on, just for the heck of it, you know. So I said, okay, 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 I'll go up and I'll do it. You know, I never thought I'd, I'd, I'd get into it. I just did it just, just to make everybody happy, you know. So I went up and I tried out. And the professor says, well, Mr. Norman, I'll see you in January. I want you in this corral group. And I thought, oh my God. Now, when I'm growing up in the, in, in the church, you know, all, all these kids would come home from college, and they'd be all pumped up for Jesus, you know, testifying how God's been using them, and how God's been doing this, and how God's been doing that, and how being in college was just being wonderful and everything. So when I, I thought, man, if I can just get to college, I'm going to be getting that much closer to heaven. Oh, well, I'm telling you, so when I got on that college campus, I thought, wow, this is great. Now I'm really going to get close to Jesus. <laughs> and um, so I was working at Denny's in Fort Worth, Texas, and it was two weeks before I had to go to campus to go to school. And my manager, and that was Brother Pat had, like, had a fellowship meeting. And... Um, here come a group of his people in, and 
they have more than usual with them, so it was kind of exciting because I always talked to them anyway, but we never mentioned too much about me going anywhere or going to church or anything. But my manager told him I was fixing to leave to go to the whole Oklahoma, and Brother Randy Leniger happened to be sitting with this group. And he said, well, you tell that young man to be sure to come over and wait on us. So I went over to the table, I introduced myself, and, and um, so Brother Randy, uh, Brother Randy asked me, he said, well, we heard you come to Oklahoma City. And I said, well, yes, sir. Um, I happen to be going to school over there, you know, Bethany Nazarene College. And they said, well, what's the address of that school? I said, well, it's on Northwest Expressway. And Brother Randy says, wow, Brother Don, you know what? We're not that far from you. I said, really? They said, yeah. They said, our address is Northeast Expressway. And I said, well, OK, brother. I'm so glad to meet you, you know. Well, we're so much alike, Brother Don. We really want you to come and try us out. There's a lot that we have in common that we think that you'll enjoy about our church. I said, well, okay, you know, that would be great. And then I found out that I was going to have to go up two weeks early, but I wouldn't have a place to stay. And I said, oh, my God, what am I going to do now? And uh, so I was waiting on, you know, I was talking through it to them, you know, while I was waiting on the table that night. And they said, uh, I told them what was going on. And they said, well, you know, come on. Why don't you come up and stay with us before you have to go to school? Okay, now I, I didn't know these people from Adam. And um, so here I am. I'm, I'm scared to death to say no, but I also, there was something in my heart telling me that I had to go. So I said, well, okay. Because I have prayed about it and I have prayed about it. And I said, God, I just want to do, I want to be, I want to be up there. I want to be close to where you want me. So he, the guy dropped me off at Brother Van, Brother Lenninger's church. And I went in, and I sat down in the back of the church. My heart started to start hurting. People were up jumping and shouting and dancing and singing. And, and I was scared, but at the same time, I felt something moving on the inside of me, saying, it's all right, it's all right, you know, it's really going to be okay. But it felt so good to me. It felt so good. And Brother Brother Leonard talked to me after the service. And he said, no, Brother Don, he says, if you're going to be here in Oklahoma, he says, I'm going to be your pastor. He says, I want you to bring a notebook. He says, I want you to sit up here on the front row. He says, I'm going to be the watchman over your soul. He says, do you know what that is? I said, no, sir. He said, I'm responsible for your soul. So here's the rules. He says, when you're here with me, it's my way or the highway. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I had no choice. I had no place else to go and no place else to stay. And then um, here comes here come Sister Necker. And she comes and she pats me on the arm. She says, Brother Don. She says, now you're in my home and you're a part of the family. She says, so from now on, you see that refrigerator over there? I said, yes, ma'am. She says, you're no longer a guest. When you come in this house, you just pull that refrigerator and you make yourself right at home. She says, because you're a part of my family now. And I don't know what to think about all of this. This was just, all, this was really what was more than I could really handle. I just really didn't know what to do. I got to Brother Randy. I ended up staying with Brother Randy and, and Brother Randy's house. And, you know, he pretty much told me the same thing. You know, it's, uh, you're living in my house, so you really got to do as I tell you to do. You listen to what I say. You know, follow my rules. And, you know, I said, okay. And I did. And to the best of my ability, I did what he asked me to do. And I tried. I learned. I learned, I sat down, and I learned, and it got into my heart, and it began
became a part of me. And it's never left me. It's never left me. I've learned from there that if I just sat down, I listened, I take notes, that it's going to get inside of here, and it's going to get inside of here, and it will never, ever leave you. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. And brother, for the model, you started teaching those messages. And all of that just started coming back. All the teachings, all the the preaching, all the lessons yes. I sat under. I sat under thousands of ministers. And God has really blessed me because I had the opportunity to sit up. And I played for a convention that there were thousands and thousands of people were at. Now I was just, you know, I, I was just starting out in Brother Lanigan's church, and they had a convention. And I played some with the band, but I, you know, I wasn't all that experienced in playing, you know, for all of them. But I did what I could. I helped out where I could. And then I was working in the kitchen, trying to get, you know, help get everything ready for dinner and everything. And they come running in there, and they said, Brother Don, Brother Don, come on, you got to come out and help us. I'm going. Why do I have to go out there and have, there's too many people out there. There's, there's way too many. No, I can't get up and do that. I can't do that. you got to help us. Sister Paula can't do it. She panicked. I'm going, oh, okay. God, you're really going to have to help me. Now, I've got to trust you because I have to go do it. I've never done this before, Lord. And God, I got out there and I sat down at the piano and Sister Linda says, come on, Brother Don, you can do it. She says, close your eyes. She said, don't look. She says, you close your eyes and you start worshiping. And I walked, I've watched Sister Linegar do this time after time again. I never could figure out how in the world she could sit there and play that piano and not look at it one time. But she was under the anointing. And she told me, Brother Don, just let go and let God. And when Joyce started uh, saying, let go and let God, let go and let God, that brought back to me, Sister and Brother Don, just let go and let God. So I did, I closed my eyes and I started playing, and God just poured his spirit out all over that place. I got blessed from the top of my head to my toes, and God has blessed and taken care of me throughout, and whatever, I have, whatever I've had to go through, God has always given me the strength to look beyond, to look beyond whatever the problem is. I've had things happen, you know, I've had people say this, I've had people say that, I've been through that for years, but you know what, God was always there. God always said, Don, you can do it. Amen. Just get up and go on. Get up and go on. Yeah. And young people, you blessed me tonight. Praise you God. made me want to get up and dance. Yeah. You made these feet want to get up and move yeah. again. They haven't moved like this in a long time. Yeah. And I thank God. Yeah. I thank God that he reached down and I was worthy enough for him to reach down and to heal my legs. I know I'm healed. Because I'm able to get up and walk around and move around and dance around. Why? Because God has been moving and with His Spirit through all these young people, through all of these songs. Sister Marlo, I love you. I love you because you let God's anointing move you. And you remind me so much of Sister Lanegar. You just, I know you just closed your eyes up there. I can't see you, but I can feel your spirit. And I know that you just let God just move through every song that you sing. And I can feel it. I can feel it moving in my soul. And I am so thankful that for that. I love you. I love every one of you here. Brother and sister, Marlo, I love you. You've been my parents since I've been, since I've been here. Elders. I pray for you uh, because I know you put up with me for a long time when I know you really didn't want to have to deal with it. But uh, you just hung in there with me and you stayed with me and you said, Don Norman, you put your hands on my head and you pray and press hard and you say, Don Norman, get that spirit out of you. Don Norman, let that spirit get out of you. 
Let me get it out of you. You let God move on you. You let God use you. And it moves. And he came upon me at, the other day in the nursing home. Brother Don came by and prayed for me. And he'll never know how he lifted me up. After he left, I just started getting up. And I started moving around. And I started walking around. And in therapy, they don't know what to think about me because now they're ready to kick me out because there's nothing more they can do with me. <laughs> thank God, thank God. I'm glad. God is doing it. It's not me, but it's God doing it. And I thank Him. I thank you, church. And I thank you, elders. I thank all of you. I love every single one of you. Thank you for letting me be a part of this church. Amen. Amen.